my uncle had made a bunch of uh, moonshine <laughs> and had put it in a large Coca-Cola bottle. And I think I was maybe 13 or 14 years old and my, my father and my uncles were watching me. I like got the Coca-Cola bottle, put some ice cubes in his, in his glass and I poured a big glass of it and they didn't tell me it was whiskey. And I went like, you know, <laughs> I didn't know, I thought it was Coca-Cola. But yeah, I think that was my first introduction to, to whiskey. Not the best introduction, but yeah. <laughs> Too many people come in and say, I want a whiskey sour. And they ask for their variation of it. And I'm like, wait a second, this is our business. We need to be the experts on this. So I came up with a syrup that I make using uh, hibiscus, the, the flowers, right? Oh, yeah. um, sage and uh, juniper berries with sugar. And this is our syrup we use for it. It's really, really, uh, if you smell this syrup, it's, you know, it's just got a really nice nose on it. You can smell like the sage coming through and everything. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Pretty herby. Exactly. We use this with bourbon and make it basically the same way you make a whiskey sour, but this is our twist on it. We call it our Amsterdam sour because these are ingredients that are very popular in Amsterdam, right? Do 60 milliliters of uh, bourbon once again in here. 30 milliliters of, of the juniper berry syrup I make. So 15 milliliters of fresh lemon in here, lemon juice. And now we're going to shake. Now we're going to double strain it because you don't want like pieces of ice in your floating around in your drink. So this uh, sieve catches all the uh, ice particles. You see like the bubbles on top? Which is a lot of, you know, a lot of flavors come out of uh, orange peels and lemon peels, etc. So. Another cherry. And this is your, uh, our drink, our, our, one of our signature drinks called our Amsterdam Sour right here. Yeah. When you're young, I don't really think you know what you're gonna do. People said, yeah, I knew since I was five years old I was going to be a doctor. I don't necessarily believe that, I mean, I. I think it shaped me to, um, to want to learn what's outside of my area. I think when you grow up in a small town, you really don't get exposed to a lot of uh, different cultures, whether it be food, different people, different language, people of different races, different ethnic backgrounds, different religions. And I think you uh, need to leave that area to be able to get outside your comfort zone and see other parts of the world. So I think it really shaped me to want to always try and learn different things. And like most whiskey cocktails, this is a, a, a stirred cocktail. And what we're doing is, when you stir it, it opens the ice, and the, which now becomes water, opens up the flavor in the drink. If you drink this straight with no ice or water, you'd be, it'd be super strong. <laughs> so this actually opens the flavor up in it and chills it too. You have to be careful not to over stir it because you can't take the water out if you do too much stir on it. Now we're going to strain it. But this is a recipe, like I said, I got from my friend in San Francisco. It's called a Mr. Robinson. And then I've done a lot of different things. I mean, I was a teacher, a journalist. I've worked in advertising for many years. I owned my own record label. I was a house music producer and DJ for many, for 20 plus years. I still own my record label. I've uh, written and produced music for television and tele TV commercials. I put out a lot of vinyl records in my life. Now I own a whiskey bar. And the next project is I want to open up a, a whiskey distillery one day. So I think I always want to constantly push myself and just to learn because if your industry fails one day and you've been doing the same thing for 20 years and you have no other skills, you're screwed. I'm not gonna lie to you, you're screwed. 
It's yeah. always good to learn more different things. And I've even cooked in restaurants when I was a student. So I've done a lot. I worked at a liquor and wine store when I was a student too. That's really what shaped me to learn a lot about whiskey was between 18 to 22, 23 years old. I used to remember stocking the shelves and learning about the whiskey bottles and wine bottles and always wanting to know where it came from, how it was produced and what it tastes like. And it definitely was inspirational for me to have a whiskey bar now, so. Yeah. I want to bring something, a, a type of food here that one reminds me of living in, in San Francisco and also um, I think just fusing, you know, bringing, taking a little bit, like, for example, these are made by a Mexican woman here in, in the Netherlands. These are fantastic uh, white corn tortillas. These are amazing. Gluten-free, you know, and um, as soon as I found this, I'm like, we can definitely make this product. But I think this is such a key ingredient. You need to have good tortillas. And uh, we get a lot of compliments on people like, where do you get your tortillas from? Okay, enjoy you guys. I also have a Japanese chef here and I have a couple of Dutch chefs here too. And you know, just using a lot of their knowledge too. They understand that everything we make here has got to be of an Asian influence. Especially my Dutch chefs, they try to tie it in with typical Dutch vegetables, you know, seasonal stuff. And this is what Dutch people eat, but fusing with Asian food, you know? Very different than what I had before. Exactly. And I like getting that reaction from people because they're used to like a French, a crunchy French fry, yeah. you know? That's like, the, no. this, this is not meant to be that way. This is meant to be soft on the inside, hard on the outside, and flavorful, you know? Don't just give it one chance, you know? Because a lot of people have a whiskey and it's not a very good whiskey. And then they just like, oh, I don't ever want to drink that again. And I think that you're really missing out because there's so many different types of styles of whiskey. It's like saying, I don't like wine. I mean, come on, how many different types of wine are there? Or I don't like beer. How many different types of beer are there? I think you just need to try and figure out where you fit in that flavor <laughs> profile, right? And then build out from there.